We've got new Team of the Season cards in NHL 23, and we're going to break them down like we always do. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. Let's stop wasting time. Let's get into it. We'll start first with the 93 overall, Matthias Michelli, who finally is getting recognized for his insanely surprising rookie season. He's trailing only Matabineers in points, and if you add Michelli as, you know, one of your top five leading rookies, you're lying. Come on. But let's take a look at his team of the season card. He's 5'11", 176, so a little bit smaller in statue. He's got two skating synergies, as well as that third one, which is basically the same now for every other new release. He's got gold snipe, silver tape to tape, seeing eye, close quarters, no contest, and make it snappy. Now, obviously, just pointing it out here, at 5'11", 176, with not even silver unstoppable force, as far as team of the season cards go, that is going to impact his value quite a bit. You have to think that because he should be recognized at least as a nominee for the Calder if there is an awards event he's going to be upgraded at least somewhat regularly he's not going to make the playoffs obviously but nonetheless he should get an upgrade pretty soon whenever there is an awards or nominees things like that gold snipe I mean I have I, there is no way to quantify what snipe actually improves if you enjoy it and you feel like it helps you out part of me thinks that's placebo because again from a developer standpoint I haven't seen anything that actually um, quantifies it being you know, helpful, unlike close quarters, which you can literally see when a player gets a stupid animation when they receive a puck off a rebound. But that being said, it's still fun that Michelli gets recognized because uh, he had such a good rookie season. Next up, we've got Anti Suomel, and I'm not going to lie, I had no idea that he's having such a good season over in Europe. As a Sharks fan, I remember Suomel. He had a pretty decent first stint with the Sharks before eventually just falling out of the lineup, and he got traded to the Leafs for Alex Barabanov. Thank you, because Barabanov is an awesome player. That being said, he's got three skating synergies, gold elite edges, tape to tape, third eye, quick draw, puck on a string, and unstoppable force. This is kind of what I would like like to see on uh on Matias Michelli nonetheless I think that at 99 elite edges loses its value remember at the beginning of the season I said this is one of the best zone abilities and it really was because when the agility attributes are so low at the beginning of the year you really notice elite edges but now that everyone's got 99 agility I really don't see uh as big a benefit especially because it's eight points nonetheless if you are a European Hup player, Anti Suomela, is an option for you. Then we've got the 94, Michael Jolly, 5'11", 174. The left-handed forward has three skating synergies. Basically all maxed out in terms of skating, as well as shot. The only thing he's, you know, lacking in is body checking down to 89 and face-offs, which, as a winger, obviously. He's got gold wheels. I'm not a huge fan of wheels, but, again, if you are, there you go. Schnipe, ankle breaker, puck on a string, elite edges, and spinorama. Literally, if you wanted a forward these would probably be among the worst abilities that I could throw on a card, so not really all that exciting here. Then we've got the 95 Hampus Lindholm. We're going to talk about sets in just a little bit, but this becomes one of the best team of the season cards that they've released. Six foot four, two fifteen, two skating synergies. He's already at ninety four acceleration, ninety four speed. You can expect regular updates as Boston is a heavy favorite in the at least the first round of the playoffs. Gold truculence, like that's it. That, that's all you need. However, he's six foot four and he has silver stick him up. I've talked about stick him up a little bit. I think that on the bigger players, six foot three and above, stick him up has a lot more value than a smaller player because of the reach. That alone, that combo right there, makes him one of the best left handed defensemen in the game. And again, you can make him, which is huge. So this is a big release for players. Another Arizona Coyote getting recognized. And really the reason why Arizona is not in the Bedard conversation for first overall, unless they get insanely lucky. He's got gold unstoppable force, shock and awe, one T, make it snappy, close quarters, and elite edges. On a smaller forward, silver close quarters and gold unstoppable force is really what you want to see to make him viable. This looks like the left-handed version of Connor Bedard. And if you've been watching my No Money Spent series, I've actually enjoyed Connor Bedard's card. I think his shot is kind of sneaky good. He's basically almost already maxed out in terms of skating. Hand stats are all maxed out, but he's not going to do anything for you defensively. But still, fun for Arizona fans, if there's many, to get two Team of the Season representatives. And then the last Team of the Season card that we've got today is the 94, Nico Heischer. One of the best defensive forwards in the game. He's got gold, quick draw, silver, unstoppable force, no contest, born leader, quick pick, and tape to tape. A very decent card. I used his Nations of Hockey card, but he's at 6'1", is great size, but 175, I noticed he got knocked off the puck quite easily. This is back in December, though, however. I 
Kind of would have liked to see him get gold unstoppable force as opposed to quick draw, but it actually makes sense because he's a very good defensive forward, all of that. Only 89 on the draw, though. New Jersey will get into the playoffs and have a really intense first round. Probably the most exciting first round, in my opinion, of the entire first round is New Jersey and the Rangers, but is in line for some regular updates with prime times and things like that. So uh, it could be a really fun card to use. You've got the 94 Nico Heischer. Then we've got some new milestone cards. First off, for his 100th point this season, the 96 overall Eric Carlson, your Norris Trophy winner, debate a wall. He's got gold seeing eye, silver ankle breaker, tape to tape, wheels, and heat seeker. Kind of a rough combination for defensemen. However, if you've been watching my channel all year round, I think seeing eye has some viability because if you are someone that goes for tip shots, I think it freezes the goalie when they are screened, like actually makes them not able to move. I have found some success. I think back to the uh, franchise master set Cam Fowler. I did find some success with that. This Eric Carlson card looks great. He's got 97 speed, 95 acceleration, max wrist shot, hand stats, all of that, and has 91 body checking as well, so uh, you can help out that weaker you know, part of his game. However, this is a pure offensive card, if we're being honest, and congrats on my man, Eric Carlson. Next up for his 1500th point, which just sounds crazy. I feel like over the last few years, a lot of people have just forgotten about the greatness that is Sidney Crosby because of, you know, McDavid and Dreisaitl and Matthews and all of that. But you got to recognize one of the GOATs. 1,500 points is insanity. And Sidney Crosby does cross that milestone. He's got 95 speed. You can go with Spark to get his acceleration up. Has gold unstoppable force as well as Big Tipper, No Contest, Beauty Backhand, and Elite Edges. I've mentioned this, that Sidney Crosby cards this year, because uh, his X-Factor specifically, um, with Unstoppable Force and Elite Edges, was an awesome combo at the beginning of the year. As he went along, I used his No Money or his X-Factor on my No Money Spend team, and I think that as the year went along and players got bigger, he felt a little bit more lackluster. That being said, this is a fun card. Like, regardless of meta and all that nonsense, Big Tipper, No Contest, and Beauty Backhand has some play in NHL. 23. I think this could be a really fun card and, you know, recognizing one of the goats. And then lastly, we've got the 99 Connor McDavid. I believe this is the first progression 99 we've received for 150 points in a season, which is simply era-adjusted Gretzky stuff. Uh, and I, again, he is just uh, an absolute wonder to watch play hockey. He's got gold close quarters, silver unstoppable force. There you go. You don't need his team of the season or Team of the Year card, if you get this 99 Connor McDavid, that's more than fine, and I feel like you're not going to have to spend nearly as much to, you know, get his Team of the Season, or if there's a Team of the Year even out there still, so uh, congrats on Connor McDavid, 99 across the board, uh, one of the most fun cards to use every year, and uh, absolutely deserving to be, I think, the first 99. Let's touch on some of the prime times again, I don't want to go into all of them, but we'll go into the big ones, we've got the 97 Nathan McKinnon, uh, much like the 99 McDavid, you really don't need to go out and get one of the other McKinnons. If you get this 97 primetime, this is more than fine. He doesn't have unstoppable force, but he's so quick, and I feel like he's his skating is better than his stats indicate. Um, this is basically a max end card, and uh, for any team of the season and team of the year holders, you know, enjoy because he is going to be a 99 very shortly. Austin Matthews gets up to 96 overall. However, he's got brutal ability. Gold third eye, quick pick, and tape to tape. I mean, yeah, it unlike McDavid and McKinnon, if you get this 96 Matthews, I would sell it to try and, you know, put towards buying one of the other ones because his team of the season uh, is, I mean, I guess a lot better, I guess. he's got At least he's got close quarters. I mean, his team of the year is just far and away one of the best cards uh, in terms of centermen. I, I hope you made his team of the year back when, uh, you know, the event came out because it's just so good. And uh, with the Leafs playing in the first round, he'll probably score a big goal hopefully and uh, get a big upgrade shortly so even though it was kind of a down year for Matthews this is still one of the best cards and he gets a 96 now Jack Hughes gets a 97 overall what a season for him as well he's got thief wingman and well-rounded 97 speed 97 acceleration 
Gold, it's tricky. Yoink, make it snappy and wheels. Yeah, you're probably not going to be excited about any of those, but he is 99 across the board. He has a shot that defies his attributes because I find his wrist shot just goes in so much, um, but this could, it dates back to NHL 21. Maybe that's all just in my head, but I found his card to be really, really fun to use. Taking a look at his team of the season card with Gold Unstoppable Force now up to 97. This is one of the better smaller players that you can get, uh, especially with Gold Unstoppable Force on. I do want to touch on some of the Buffalo Sabres. We got the 6'3", 195 Dylan Cousins Gold Close Quarters, Crease Crasher, and Ankle Breaker. I haven't tried it this year, but Crease Crasher might actually be pretty nasty um, if you go for rebounds a lot. So I'm going to actually make a build or try to find a few cards with Crease Crasher on it, I think. 92 speed, 94 acceleration. Obviously, that's pretty low at this stage of the game, but he's so big, kind of makes up for it. I wish he had Thief as well. 91 faceoffs isn't terrible if you are elite on the draw, but you're going to lose you know, the tiebreaker if you have a lot going up against cards that have 99 faceoffs, which is pretty much everyone at this point. Uh, his team of the season does look pretty nasty uh, with gold close quarters, but he does get quick draw to help out with that 91 faceoff, but uh, still waiting for some speed upgrades. Uh, as he gets up to 99, he'll be one of the better cards, kind of like an Austin Matthews almost. We also got a 92 overall Rasmus Dahlin with seeing eye and stick him up. Uh, not a bad combo again, uh, because he is a little bit bigger. I think stick him up is more effective, but only 90 speed, 93 acceleration would have liked to see a skating synergy on him as well on top of spark but still a pretty good defenseman if you are looking for a non-master set left-handed defenseman should touch on adrian kempe as well 94 overall six foot two be on the lookout for this card Six foot two, 200 with 92 speed and acceleration. Gold elite edges, no contest, make it snappy. Almost max shooting and hand stats. So he might go for a little bit of a cheaper amount in comparison to some other cards around his size. So just be on the lookout. He might be a decent value. And then we had some pretty crazy progression or at least ones that are deemed to be uh, more you know, actual custom in terms of the attributes. He's got gold close quarters. It's tricky. Big tipper, crease crasher, and big rig. So this might actually be a perfect card for my little theory there. Uh, he does have have Thief as well as Protector. I'd probably go Protector to almost max out that body checking. 92 speed, 94 acceleration. However, he plays a little bit better than those skating stats indicate, and he's so big. Think of like a, a basically a Yarmir Yager, although, again, Yarmir Yager's team builder is still one of the best cards, if not the best one in the game. And the last card I want to highlight today, the 96, Joel Armia, 6'3", 216, Comes out of nowhere, 94 speed, 96 acceleration. There you go. This is a great card. Silver Unstoppable Force. If you are a Montreal Canadian fan, go grab this Joel Armia because this is a fantastic card. Uh, just in terms of like the build that they've given it, all the important stats are very, very good. And uh, you know, at six foot three, two sixteen, you can't go wrong. All right, so let's go over these sets now because there are new sets added in. As I go to the wrong screen here, don't mind me. We'll go down to the community team of the season sets, and as you go down uh, to the side here, you'll see the ones uh, that you can upgrade. So Nico Heischer, again, if you want to make his team of the season card, there is a path to actually getting him. You can make his Nations of Hockey card, and then twenty six collectible to make Nico Heischer. I wouldn't unless you were a Nico Heischer fan. I think it's a good card, but not one that is going to be uh, elite in terms of everyone else. But ignore that thought process now because you should just be trying to make the cards you want. And I just wish that every card was available to be made. Uh, just so frustrating. That being said, if you are looking for a great card, regardless if you're a fan or not, making Hampus Lindholm's trade deadline card and then 14 collectibles to get his team of the season, 100% worth it. Uh, that gold trade Truculence on Hampus Lindholm makes him one of the best defensemen in the game right now, so definitely worth doing there. So guys, let me know what you think of the content in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.